Good grazing systems require good water systems, and gravity water systems can be a very viable way to provide water. A good water system provides plenty of clean, healthy water in a convenient location for the animals. For a farmer, a good water system requires a reliable and low-cost system that doesn't require a lot of hours of labor and maintenance. Where there is sufficient water available above the pasture, a gravitational water system provides one of the most efficient methods and inexpensive methods of providing water to livestock. In a gravity water system, a pond or well located on a hill above the pasture provides the sources of water. For it to work, gravity water must have sufficient water and sufficient slope to, to, to deliver the water at the needed pressure to the livestock. And today we have with us Rob DeClue, the grazing specialist from the Shenango County Soil and Water Conservation District, who will be interviewing Mr. Herman Buster von Hassel here in South Otsialik. As far as uh, the grazing system, Buster, what prompted you to, to basically get into this kind of a system? Well, um, we had a barn burn back in 1993, and uh, at that time, everything was get bigger, get bigger. Everybody said I should go to 250 cows and, and get bigger, but uh, but I live in the northern Shenango County, and it's just uh, between the weather and the, the soil that I have, it's no sense getting bigger. So we sold the cows to a boy down in Delancey in the Catskill Mountains, and we went down and visited him, and he had a water system, and he was feeding baleage, and his herd average was unbelievable. And that was 20 years ago. So the, this particular water source, this is a, a new source of water for your cattle? Well, it is for these pastures right here. It's mm -hmm. a new source. They, mm -hmm. And it's nice because you don't have any more cows walking through the river. You, the cows come in, their bags are dry, and they, go to, they graze a little. They walk to the trough and start drinking. Mm -hmm. And there's no crowding. There's no rushing. And you can put the water where the cows are. They don't have to walk a half a mile to the stream to, to drink. They won't. If they, if they lay down, they won't drink. <laughs> so you have quite a bit of a drop from this site here yeah, yeah. to most of your grazing area. Yeah, it's a good, I think this was, uh, I think this is 1,500 feet elevation, mm -hmm. and it drops down as two or 300 feet. Mm -hmm. So we're working with a, quite a bit of drop, you right. know, from this new source to, again, most of the ground that you pass your cattle and heifers on. Yeah. Now this, this particular pond is only one source and it only is working right now for a part of your grazing system, right. okay? Right. Um, and wh what does it support in terms of the cattle? Cattle, well, probably 80, 80 to 90 head here when they're drinking on these pastures. That's usually daytime. At night, they're close to the barn, mm -hmm. and we have water from the barn down there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the uh, the size of the pond, this is pretty much size for um, the your animal's needs. You've never so far oh, had any problems oh, with Oh, we never had a problem. This is just overkill. It's a monster, you know, <laughs> compared to, but um, it's good, clean, clean water. It's all trout in there, and, and it's, the pond is um, fenced in so the cows can't come in here. It's fenced in. I don't want them walking in here. So they don't have access to they the pond? They don't have access, never. No, they don't. It's, it's, as you know. far as the uh, getting the water out of the pond, can you describe what was originally designed to well, basically extract the water? We had a, a ditch dug here. We buried half of a septic system tank, the bottom half. Mm -hmm. And the water from the pond ran into that through a ditch filled with gravel. And from there we went to another, we were in a pipe underground to keep it from freezing. And from there we got a shut off. We could shut it on or off. And it goes to the tanks. It goes down to the tanks. And the, the pipeline to the tanks, uh, you know, is that buried or is it above it's ground? It's above ground. Okay. Usually, I got it written down, I think around the middle of November we shut it off. 
Okay, and then as far as the pipeline, it's above ground. Is that a concern in terms of, you know, the animals uh, squashing no, it or never, anything never, like that? Never, never, never. It lays right underneath the fence. Near it. Okay. What, what size pipeline is it that goes down? It's an inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter. Okay, so that's a pretty good size pipeline. But we make all the fittings out of metal. We don't use plastic fittings mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they have a tendency to crack and like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But but you say you drain it once you, the animals are every, in? For... Every winter we drain it out. Okay, so you shut off the valve here yeah, and then... Shut the valve and it drains down. Okay. The size of the troughs, I mean, how are the troughs? Or what kind of material? Well, we put the troughs to start with underneath the fence so that half of it is in one pasture and half in the other. Mm -hmm. So you have ample flow into oh, the... All, all the water you want. Okay. You got, in fact, you got to watch what kind of uh, uh, valves you put in. You can't... Some of them... Geez, you got to have different valves as you go down with according to the amount of water pressure you have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a certain kind of valve that works better well, than another? Well, one valve is... We use the one on the top tank, and as you go down through, we have different valves. So as a pressure builds up, you, you, you find have, the need to yeah, use a, yeah. a kind of a different type different of valve. valve. Okay. You know, again, what I was trying to bring out earlier is that you've always pastured. It's not like, you know, you were a total confinement oh, no, this, operation. This is, all, this is just improving what I always done. As far as the source here, I mean, you, you have a pond here, but were there other options you explored as far as a type of water source, you know? Um, I and mean, what I'm thinking of is uh, some farmers may uh, consider a, developing a, a natural spring um, or not so much here, but maybe down at the farmstead or some I, other place. I, I've got friends of mine, they got springs, mm -hmm. real nice springs, mm -hmm. and they use them. They're covered and they, it works real nice. Mm -hmm. And they, you can go right up and look into them and, mm -hmm. and they don't freeze in the winter. They, they shut the water off in the winter. Now, with your particular situation, you don't have too much pressure at the very bottom of your pipeline at this point, or not? No, it's so far that hasn't been a problem, not a problem. Okay, because I've heard some farmers where they almost can get too much of a good thing. Oscar Robinson yeah. is an example. Where well, he... there are ways you can stop that, I heard. You can put a, a pipe in and let air in. It's like a float valve kind mm -hmm. of deal. Mm -hmm. And I know a friend of mine had a spring for his house. And he would go up every so often and open up and let air in and close it. Mm -hmm. you now, when you want to start the animals grazing in the springtime, what kind of measures or steps do you take to basically set the system in place so that water's flowing and... Oh, you it's know. very simple. When I come up, when we get ready to when we go up check the fences, we come right up, we turn the... First thing we do, well, when I get done in the fall, I shut the valves off and hook all, all of the hoses that mm -hmm. go to the tanks. And I go down and open the bottom one. Then I come up and I am open all of the pet cocks up so that mm -hmm. the flush is out. And in the spring when we come, we open it up. We come up here, we open it up, and we go down through. And as, it, as we turn it on, the first one will... Muddy water will come, you know, and debris will come out. I think it comes in, and little by little we shut her off and work our way clear to the bottom, flush it all out. One, one of the questions I hear very commonly from farmers is, you know, the concern about, you know, the pipe splitting and, you know, fittings uh, failing. We never have had that, never once, not one. Do you have any issues with the sediment or any other debris from the pond? going through the pipe network and no. clogging up the valves or anything like that? Never never had an issue like that. I don't think it can't happen, but we mm -hmm. never had it. Is there anything you could uh, add or any suggestions or advice to other farmers that, you know, if they're at a starting point where you might have been, you know, oh, I just I've done it earlier. This, this has been a, an opportunity to talk with Buster Von Hassel here in Otsilik, New York. And he has shared uh, a lot of his experiences with not only grazing in general, but in particular, a livestock watering system that's gravity feed in this particular case. And so we learned quite a bit in terms of what works and maybe some of the considerations and experiences that have been hopefully helpful to other farmers that might be considering a similar approach.